Hello and welcome, esteemed faculty, staff, and fellow students. My name is Elizabeth Moreno, and my mentor for my thesis is Professor Meng Yu, Chair of the Computer Science Department. My defense today shall showcase how human imagination has risen to new heights through the use of world-building and role-playing video games. With access to more adaptive and efficient tools, game developers have had more power than ever to create immersive and engaging stories for people of all ages to live out their wildest fantasies. But how do they do that? How do you create a world with compelling story, believable characters, all from scratch, then bring it to life through a virtual medium? Let's find out. First of all, let's discuss why role-playing games, or RPGs, are important. They have the capability to do three main things outside of their intrinsic entertainment purpose. Expand millennia of human imagination, explore extreme, dangerous, or unusual possibilities, and teach individuals how to respond to an unfamiliar situation. Many video games, especially those in the RPG genre, allow players to make their own choices that affect the story in a wide variety of different ways. Many traditional stories, regardless of the chosen medium, follow the same linear narrative of the hero, 12 linear steps that follow the conflict, rising action, climax, and finally, the return to a new norm for the hero. However, role-playing games are interactive and allow the player to be an active participant in that story, shaping and bending the tale in, to their will in real time. RPGs can also be used as a type of simulation, where certain aspects of a situation can be modeled and adjusted according to what the needs of the study or project may be. They can be used to represent very dangerous or costly conditions, and can be useful in situations where possible courses of action may be too expensive to explore through means such as trial and error. An example of this is using an RPG to simulate possible solutions to a natural resource management problem, where changes to a sensitive environment may cause unnecessary risk to the population, landscape, or to the resource itself. They also allow people to learn best through trial and error. RPGs allow them to make mistakes, which are critical to learning and understanding. Practicing a new or unknown skill within an RPG setting allows them the freedom to fail without real-life consequences, while still being able to explore what some of those potential consequences may be. For example, RPGs can be used to teach students software engineering concepts by allowing them to choose their team members and develop a piece of software. This allows those students to learn how and why certain choices affect their team as a whole, and what the potential ramifications could be if there is a conflict between team members or if deadlines are not met. My thesis, How Do RPG Video Games Approach World Building, addresses how tools such as artificial intelligence, game engines, and NPCs, non-playable characters, influence the universe that the player interacts in, as well as how game developers utilize these tools to create the masterpieces that many know and love today. World building is something of an art, one that does not only apply to just video games, but to other forms of narratives as well. However, since video games have the technological advantage by allowing a player to be completely and totally immersed in a fantasy universe, there are many elements that go into making that world believable, regardless of a fictional context. Sewing these elements together to create the fabric of this universe's reality is known as world building. Video game developers have a unique set of tools in order to create these worlds that the traditional author or dungeon master may have no need for. Beyond their imaginations, developers use robust game engines, careful graphic design, and powerful algorithms to create content for these worlds. This research question is aimed at understanding the overall design process of the creation of an RPG universe and the importance of the elements involved. All universes, including our own reality, require building blocks to create larger and greater objects within them, and this applies to the concept of world building as well. These universes that exist within RPGs require different types of tools to create a realistic world for the player to exist in. Through my research, I have found that nearly all of my sources that contain elements of RPG world building fall into one of the following three categories, system, structure, or surface. These categories correspond to the level at which that particular world-building element is found or created at, as well as how previous levels work together to create a stable foundation for all of the layers that come after. The first and lowest level is the system level. The system category reflects the most basic components of the game, the architecture of the software being used, how the architecture is being built, and the game engine that runs the tools with which to build the game, in addition to running the game itself. All of these elements focus most on and revolve around the software and hardware capabilities of the platform of choice, usually PC or consoles. Developers must start with these to understand the capabilities and limitations that they must work within to create their desired game. Many times, elements and tools at this layer limit what the game will or will not be able to do. The next level, or mid-level, 
is the structure level. The structure category collects elements under it that add to the design of how the game works. It applies the software from the system level to the concepts of the game that the developers want to emulate. This applies to game elements such as quest and plotline design, creating appropriate NPCs, and employing the use of artificial intelligence to procedurally generate content, such as filling in visual textures, populating areas of a map, or even creating entire levels of a game, all through an algorithm that is finely tuned to the wants and needs of the developers. The final level, or the surface category, reflects the elements of world building that the player directly interacts with and possesses the power to change. This includes forming networks and relationships with NPCs through interactions and making decisions that affect the plot or story that could potentially result in different endings being unlocked. Using the layered approach that we have now established for the world building process, how do these layers interact? What does the layered approach add to the world building process? What elements are most common throughout each layer? Through my research, I have found a few common threads that can be followed through all three layers that we have discussed thus far. NPCs, non-playable characters, are one of these elements and appear equally across all three categories. The use of AI as a tool also appears within all three categories, but is most easily detectable in the surface and structure categories. Beginning with NPCs, Let's take a look at how they appear within each layer. At the system level, NPCs and their capabilities, design, and essence are managed by the game engine. Structurally, the design of an NPC, both in context to the narrative as well as their visual design, rely on the developer to, to use tools provided by the system in order to achieve the desired aesthetic, personality, and ultimately the purpose of the NPC. This design directly impacts the surface level, where choices made by the developers within the structural level are seen by the player and affect their experience while playing the game. The player can then use these designs to alter stories or quest lines through playthrough and interactions with these NPCs. Moving on to artificial intelligence, the use of AI in video games is astounding. While AI can be used to actually play video games and even beat their human counterparts reliably in real time, in RPGs, AIs are used in more of a back-end focused manner. The game engine and system architecture must allow for AI to be employed, most likely using a black box or oracle machine architecture to allow for the AI to function properly. Once the system is capable of handling the AI, it can be employed to assist the developers in generating content such as creating maps, populating an area of the map, creating specific objects or textures, or designing the layout of an entire level, which saves the developers time and energy that they can then use to focus their efforts elsewhere. When raised to the surface level, AI is very prominent. It interacts directly with the player, controlling the movement of the NPCs, allies and enemies alike, and providing a real-time opponent or ally for the player to interact with. So now that we've analyzed some of the common elements found in RPG world building, what are some of the applications of it? The organizational structure of RPG world building elements allows developers to better analyze their game from multiple perspectives. For example, an inefficient structure at the system level could lead to larger problems at the surface level, where player character controls are not responding the way that they should. It may also mean that the game is slow, glitchy, or does not run well on the desired platform, leading to negative player experiences, disappointing ratings, and therefore low sales. Analyzing the game from the surface perspective can reveal the need for certain structural changes to the overall story of the game which may in turn require a better construction at the system level or simply a rewrite of the plot at the structural level. Further research could provide insights into other common elements found in RPG video games, such as character statistics like defense and magic or morality systems that reward or punish the player for certain actions taken in the game. All of the sources used in this presentation can be found here. I would like to extend my gratitude to those that have assisted me throughout the process of this thesis. A special thank you to Professor Yu, who has guided me and provided me with invaluable resources and feedback on conducting research within the field of computer science. A special thank you also goes out to the Honors Program. Sarah Maria has provided me with organizational resources to assist with details related to the more stressful points of this project, and Marjorie's pre-thesis course gave me a fantastic opportunity to explore the world of research in a new way and prepare me for this. Thank you also to my family, who has been nothing short of enthusiastically loving and supportive of all of my endeavors. And a very special thank you to my peers, Evie, my research partner in crime, Sergey for providing clarity and simplification when the thesis seemed overwhelming and unorganized, 
Curtis for listening to and providing feedback on the defense drafts, and Amber for encouraging, inspiring, and assisting with the understanding process of writing a thesis as a whole. A very special thank you also goes to my brothers of the Beta Gamma chapter of Alpha Phi Omega for their constant encouragement and support.